Hey, what's up, y'all? It's DJ Fanatic at SoundsForProducers.com. Welcome to this video. If you're new to producing, if you never produced before, if you've never seen the DAW digital audio workstation of FL Studio, this is a beginner's video just showing you some basics in FL Studio. So, have a look. All right, fellow producers, welcome to this video of going over some basics in FL Studio. Um, that actually, I, did it rhyme? I don't know. But uh, if you notice, it's a new channel, so please hit that sub button, as well as click on the bell so you can see our new videos coming out daily, actually, uh, currently. And also, you can see all the producer tips and all the product demos and beat making videos that we have on the channel. And if there's something that you want to see, please let us know and also we reviewed some plugins and stuff on the channel too so yeah excited to uh, do this video uh, for those that aren't really familiar with FL Studio because you're looking at a bunch of stuff and you have no idea what it is and it can be overwhelming so uh, if you learn something in this video please give it a thumbs up and also you know put in the comments uh, your favorite part or what you would like to learn in FL Studio that will be dope so anyway, um, let's jump in. This is actually a beat that we made uh, with our packs, our loot packs. Let me show you those right quick. All right, I forgot which pack we actually used to um, load up this uh, beat or whatever. But um, anyway, actually, let's start there. Um, if you notice, there's a bunch of different icons all over the place. Don't get overwhelmed. Um, if you want to find your sounds, they're usually in the view browser plugin picker uh, it has a dual purpose but if you click on the I don't even know why it's called a plugin picker but it's actually the browser window it's actually similar to a window of Internet Explorer or you know like a window search and also Mac too so if you click on it it has a file folder base um, format so you got you know your main folder and you got subfolders and you got more subfolders and then you got your files and you can have folders in a sub subfolder so just break down the hierarchy like that and you can keep all your stuff organized outside of FL Studio and just basically route it uh, let's see if you go to general settings and go to file you can route where you want you know your um, whatever folder you want to browse here in the browser and you have access to tons of different folders you can add and especially to keep things organized so you can always do that um, so and also what's cool in the browser you can actually search things so like for instance this 808 if I right click on a folder I can smart find things and just type things in 808 hit enter and it'll find you know an 808 in that particular folder that's a quick way and a little tip that you can use to find things fast um, but you can always just look in and just click on things you know so you get the idea so that is the browser window and also in the browser window um, you have the opportunity not just to look for sounds but you can also uh, search for projects and of course you know your history is in here you got patterns effects generated whatever um, this is a quick way to get to your plugins to navigate all the plugins you have and they're also broken down by um, sections so you have the generators which make sounds and have sounds in them tons of different stuff in each section FL studio actually comes with a lot of uh, pre-installed um, image line native plugins but you know when you start buying stuff you know they're all going there see complete control uh, funky finger circle two uh, auto gun comes with uh, FL studio which is actually a really cool plugin because has tons of stuff in there and I need to use that more actually uh, Omnisphere Nexus and stuff like that storage the silent trophies expand so you can always just um, organize these the way you want I don't want to get too far in the video because it's for beginners that are in FL Studio and if you if you're not n new to FL Studio this is a refresher as well and this is FL Studio 20 I forgot exactly which ver version 
but is a newer version is FL Studio 20. So you can search by generators or effects. You know, these are distortions, you know, native and not native. Uh, you know, miscellaneous, you got tons of different stuff. So all your effects are in one and generates in, in another. And you can also, I think, uh, create your own um, sections as well. And then you got installed and you got your new section when you install something new. Uh, when you install new plugins, you know, you go to your uh, manage plugins. Hopefully this will pop up. Yeah. And then you can, you know, do a, um, a scan. So what you would do is just um, find plugins and make sure you have the particular folders that they're stored in here. And that way it'll pull up all your plugins and you can always find them here. So, you know, I could do a whole separate video on that, but I uh, didn't want to get too far into it. Um, so, and also that you click audio, you quickly can get to audio sounds. So, yeah, so there's a browser window. You get the idea. Let me close that. So now, um, this whole window with all this stuff in it that you've been staring at is actually the playlist window. Um, basically, it consists of a large amount of data, pretty much primarily all of your music data um, in, a, in a window where you can see it structurally. And you can also get to small parts quickly, like the MIDI notes. Uh, you can get to different patterns quickly. You can get to different audio quickly. I wonder what happens if I double click it. Oh, okay. Ah, I never did that before. The fruity wrapper opens. You just learned something new. So, um, if you notice, this little side here is, um, I guess, the pattern picker side. It wasn't always here. Um, basically, you can select these patterns. I wonder if you double click. Yep. So, if you double click on any of these, you can get right to the MIDI data, the raw data that you played, which is this data here. I can play this pattern and let you hear it. And of course you can click in uh, notes. And I think I played this earlier. So you can always click in notes if you don't, you're not, you know, uh, music theory savvy and you don't want to play a melody you can always click in notes um, so I don't want to get ahead of myself but anyway these this is the plug-in picker uh, I know there's a lot of stuff that I can cover here um, but you can always just drag these to the playlist window you know you can do a lot of different things and with when it's selected you know you can paste it anywhere and there you have it I'm using th this paint tool where you can just paint it like this uh, draw tool you know you're just pretty much drawing that particular pattern anywhere you want so those little um, transport not transport but these tools here are very helpful maybe I can go over those in another video um, just specifying the difference of each one but this is the playlist window this is usually where you arrange your song and you have all your different elements in it. Um, if you notice earlier, I did double click on a few patterns and these, this is actually the piano roll. And this is where you have a lot of your chords and melodies uh, for your instruments that have notes and stuff. So it's actually for any pattern, you'll have this playlist uh, piano roll window, except for audio. You won't have that uh, for audio because you don't really need um, a piano roll for audio because it's pretty much um, audio data not MIDI data note data so notice as I click any of these it's like having a piano sideways but if you look at it horizontal I actually have um, you know all the way across here are like long piano keys and you can actually have them in a key that you want by using this drop down using helpers and scale highlighting you can choose whatever type of scale you want or in whatever root note you want there's also the stamp tool where you can create all types of chords if you're not really good at making chords so yeah there's a lot of tools there in the piano um, roll 
and you can do a lot of cool stuff this is your down here at the bottom this is your velocity and there's some other parameters that you can change it to panning note release aftertouch um, fine pitching notes uh, channel routing channel channel panning you can do a lot of stuff in this window and also like if you're using samples or whatever these can be used as triggers to sa uh, trigger certain samples so this window has a lot of a lot of power and you can use this up here which is um, like a mini view view bar and you can find um, basically travel long distance quickly up here especially if you have a bunch of crazy little notes all over the place and you want to check them out up here you can so that is the playlist window and the piano roll um, the playlist window also has audio data as you can see it consists of uh, you can resize stuff you can make it larger whatever um, this is audio this is MIDI basically performance data note on and note off data data where you push the key down and data how long you hold it down and data when you let up so I remember back in the day MIDI was actually very confusing to um, using computers and now it's just so much easier to get stuff you know out of your head and into a program and the third thing you see over here is called automation and we actually do have automation uh, I use automation in one of the loops I use automation in halftime glitch 2 and the master so if you notice these weird looking um, lines is automation data and this is a volume automation basically automation is a chosen parameter that changes over time and left to right is the time obviously and up and down is the amount of uh, change per um, parameter so usually if it goes up that parameter is um, going up for volume anyway um, let's see halftime I had it all the way up for that so yeah anyway automation is basically a setting in a particular plugin for that sound changing over time so it's like a like movement like a paintbrush let's say you want to paint something this long and then stop painting it it'll stop there hopefully that's a good example so uh, you have automation you have audio and patterns you probably mainly use patterns uh, unless you you use a lot of samples and you can you know and actually you can drag in audio straight into the playlist window and just use audio I know producers that do that as well I use a combination so uh, so that was the piano roll and this is the major playlist window uh, don't get overwhelmed with all this stuff up here maybe I'll do that in another video and next you have the uh, mixer window and these can be accessed with your function keys on your laptop or keyboard F6 uh, opens the channel rack which I'll show you next F7 is actually the um, piano roll if you hit it again it'll go to the last window and I think F8 hopefully I don't mess things up don't want to confuse you but as a quick way to get to the plug-in picker F8 I forgot about that and that is all the plugins and it's it's visually overwhelming but I think it looks so cool so anyway uh, back to the mixer um, this is the plug-in picker see there you go a lot of cool stuff right maybe I'll make that the channel art on this video so the um, mixer does a lot of cool stuff too you have each of your sounds that are in that are in the um, playlist window are routed to the mixer you can route them through the channel rack or right clicking and do channel routing that way from the channel rack I'll show you the channel rack in a second um, each sound has its own track or you can combine them in groups you can send them all over the place to effect sends you can send them to you know a group um, channel excuse me uh, track um, everything is routed automatically to the master um, but you can also um, you know change routing to your liking when you start doing more complex stuff um, so each um, track in the mixer uh, of course resembles like an old school mixer where you see those big consoles and studios million dollar two million dollar studios basically this is what it is 
but some some have more function functionality and other parameters but if you notice when i hit play <laughs> All those meters are basically dB meters for each sound. So it shows you um, how um, loud a certain sound is on each track. And you can change it with this. That's crazy. I actually forgot, you know, looking at basically that's the waveform view. Uh, I prefer the dB view. So. And a master is here, and every uh, track has, this is a mute or solo, on and off. This is actually panning, left to right. This is reverse polarity. You can reverse the sound. Uh, you can try it with drums and stuff, or, or anything, uh, just to see what you come up with. This is swap left, uh, right channels. You can swap the left from the right. This is stereo separation. Uh, this obviously is the volume or uh, loudness of the track. This actually is, you can turn off the plugins that um, are on the track. For instance, this choir loop has a lot of stuff. I can turn them all off just by clicking that. This is track latency for like when you're doing just really heavy processing stuff. Um, I haven't really used that. I think it automatically kicks in for certain things. I have to look up on that. Uh, this down here is arm disc for recording, like when you're recording vocals. Let's say I was recording straight into here right now. I would have to route my voice into this track and just hit arm go record. So, um, that, and of course you can right click and change colors, you know, for each track or whatever, and you can rename it or whatever. You can do a lot of cool stuff and do icons or whatever. You can just really get creative with this stuff. Um, I move so fast when I make music, I sometimes I don't just change the colors and stuff. So, um, and then you have your uh, sends. You can send, you know, select a reverb here and use that same reverb on all the tracks or whatever you want to have, delay, whatever. You can do a lot of cool stuff there. So, and down here is a built-in uh, equalizer for each track. Every, notice how it changes. Say I change here, select perk. See, it changed there, you know, say I select hi-hat, change there. So every, um, what do you call it? Every uh, track in the mixer has its own equalizer, built-in equalizer. But I love the parametric EQ too because you can see it visually. But this is good for ear training. So that's a lot of stuff I went over in the mixer. Um, lastly, I'm going to show you the channel rack. Uh, the channel rack is pretty much where you start making a beat um it's basically like um what do you call it step editing i think that's what the term they used to call them. but let me show you an example so i can give you a better idea what it is all right so we're gonna hit play the beat <laughs> That gives you an idea of what do you call it this is the hi-hat let's solo that so you can see so you get the idea so every little block I would say or every little note whatever these things are called because they don't really look like blocks but every little button that you push that's where the sound would have um, would sound and it's based on your BPM and uh, amount of bars that you chose for that particular sound. And notice there's like a little status bar. And it'll just keep going. And it kind of lights up so you can see where it's at. Um, grid editor, I think that's what they call it. So anywhere, anyway, when you click anywhere in here, you're actually um, on this sound you're changing the rhythm of that hi-hat. So, and to get to the piano roll quickly, you can actually right click and go to piano roll for that particular sound. So you can do some really cool stuff. Um, usually I use the channel rack for drums um, and go to piano roll for keys, melody and chords and stuff. So I know it's a lot. Um, there's like little subtle parameters and stuff that, um, you know, 
a lot of people don't know what they do, but if there's something that you, you're curious about, you know, you want to learn about NFL studio, please uh, put it in the comments and uh, I'll definitely see if I know anything about it and if I can share my knowledge as, as well on it. So there's a quick little breakdown. We went over the, uh, you know, browser window. We went over the plugins, uh, excuse me, the pattern pickers, uh, a few other things. We went over the playlist window, went over the mixer window and the channel rack. The channel rack, you know, is, is kind of like the beginning stages of your beat. And then you can fine tune things in the piano roll. And, uh, you know, you can tune things here too, but changing different hi-hat patterns and stuff and showed you how to, you can load plugins here with this drop down, and it's usually categorized, but you can always change that, uh, based on as you progress with your other plugins. And I don't even have all my stuff in that favorites window and I'll show you the equalizer and you know, there's just a lot of stuff up here. Uh, there's a bunch of items up here, pretty much anything you hover, it'll tell you over here in a hint panel. See, view browser plugin picker, view channel rack. So, and this is the view playlist. So, anyway, you get the idea. So, again, hopefully, you learned something. Hopefully, this video wasn't too boring. It's been your boy, DJ Fanatic of SoundsForProducers.com. And I'll put the link to the free loop pack in this um, description and also the link of the um, product excuse me, the loop pack that we use for this beat. Cause this beat actually is all uh, based from the same um, loop pack, which is, that's pad loop one four. Or I think it's one of the uh, Scorpion Sting. So, but anyway, they're all dope and check them out when you get a chance. And shout out to those that are buying the packs. We love to share your music. So definitely uh, support you. Um, and also hit that sub button hit the bell so you see all the videos coming up and give it a thumbs up keep making dope music signing out peace hi hat hi hat hi hat hi hat